Hello everybody, welcome back to the lab. This is Jay Appel and I welcome you back to the YouTube channel where this exciting adventure is looking at the McAfee DLP product and specifically the case study came up today where somebody wanted to know how in the world can I get an email if somebody should perform a bypass. Now a bypass is one of those items in DLP if someone were to plug a device in and need a bypass they would have to talk to the EPO administrator or designated person who has the access to EPO to do a bypass. And what we want to do is not perform the bypass itself. What we want to do is to monitor the bypass and get an email. So without further ado, let's show you how it's done. What we're going to do is we're going to start here by going to menu. Now I've already done it, but I'm going to walk you through the pieces that I did. We're going to start at menu. I still call this menu. That's the way it's been forever and ever. And uh, they came up with this hamburger stack, pa pancake stack, whatever it is, it's still menu to me. And we're going to work our way to DLP operations, which of course is down here under data protection, DLP operations. And we're going to go over here to the operational event tasks. And then we're going to locate automatic mail notification. Now what we're doing here is we already have one that's created, but if you would, we would go to actions, go to new rule, and then we would label it appropriately. And this is what you would see when you create your new rule, except everything would be blank. Up here, the first thing we would do is we would name it. Now, you know, from looking at my YouTube channel over the years, I'm kind of a stickler for wanting to have things numbered and named because they're going to show up in the audit log at some point and I really want to know what I'm looking at and we cut the time down if I have my first rule for the DLP ops or operations at least gives me an idea of where it's located where the rule and this is going to be to track bypass activity the next piece is to make sure that it's enabled we have enabled disabled ours is going to be enabled we're going to select process events that occurred after the last run. I'm going to skip on down here to from. Who is going to be from? It could be dlp at acme.com. It can be DLP admin at yourdomain.com. It doesn't even have to be a real address, but you have a real address in there in case somebody wants to send a reply back. Down here under recipients, it can either go to the user, it can go to someone's manager, it can go to a reviewer, but we're going to, uh, for the purposes of the lab, I'm going to have selected the ellipse. The email address is going to be associated with the user account in EPO, and that, uh, it, should it become blank, because you didn't take the time to fill it out, there won't be anything to select here, but all the different admins, if you have the email address, they'll pop up here and you can select one or more if you need to and there's my name if you want to cc you can add that and then this is where the exciting part is now over the years this has all been the same since the very beginning but some people look at this and go this is a little weird let's go through it together the subject line i'm putting in the name of the rule so if someone were to call up and said oh i got this this problem now this is going to admins it's not going to the user right so people who are getting this should have an idea of what you're doing and why you're sending them an email in this case it's coming to me because i want to know if somebody performed a bypass entered bypass i could say here entered bypass and then i put a space after this there's that little space right there and then I'm going to go in here and choose what do I want. Well, I chose event type. I am entering bypass. I'm leaving bypass. We'll see that when we get up into the real criteria, what that event type would look like. And I could also say on and what computer would it be? Computer name and I'll insert the computer name. DLP ops entered bypass. Or I can change this to event type is 
because it might not be just that we entered the bypass, it would be that maybe we left the bypass on this computer. Down here under the body, the event detected was event type. Now here, I may have typoed this. Insert. You'll notice that I just caught this little error here. You have to have these curly braces and it looks like that got chopped up. So make sure you don't do that. Double check to make sure that all of these variables are within the curly brackets. It took place on the device, kind of like what we did up here, by the user, the severity is, and then the severity. When you're done, click Next. Here's where the magic sauce is. You're going to choose event type from DLP operational events. Over here under the event type, this is where we get different particular features that you can trigger on. In here, when we choose this little drop down, we see we have quite a variety of things to choose from. The client was installed, the client's up, the client's down, so on and so forth. But I only care about bypass activities. So I selected client enters bypass mode. Click the little plus sign next to here. It allows me to go in there and put client leaves the bypass mode. And I do it one more time for the client override key. Now you'll notice I can also mention client uninstall key, file release from quarantine, DLP client quarantine release key generated. You probably want to get used to as an EPO administrator, just generally becoming available in knowledge of what other items you may want to choose from or have the option to choose. When you're done, you click save. Perfect. Now what's going to happen is there's one last step. We're going to head on over to the server tasks right here. And on this listing, we're going to come down here and look for email operational events. Bingo. Come on over here, select edit, configure this similar to mine, choose next. There's nothing really to do here except click next. And then you can set up the schedule. Now in a lab environment, I like to have every five minutes. Click the plus sign, 10 minutes after the hour, 15, 20, all the way up to your one hour interval, so every five minutes. Now you can also, of course, with server tasks, do an on-demand run. And I'm gonna click Save. So we created the operational task. We've configured the timer in the server tasks. These are, of course, all of the tasks meant for the EPO administrator. And now what we're gonna do is I could generate manually and just select run. Now here's the mail. You'll see I had some earlier events from today. It is roughly two o'clock in the afternoon. And without going into it in great depth, what we'll do is let's just uh, do a bypass so you can see this. I'm going to head on over to my client. It's all ready for me. I'm going to use the identification code. And how did we get that? We went down here to the McAfee icon, manage features, DLP endpoint console. You'll see all of the notifications that we've triggered. And you come down here to tasks. Choose the identification code and copy it. And meanwhile, over on the EPO server, you're going to be heading on over to the DLP help desk. And we're going to do a client bypass. I'm going to put the name of Jay Appel in here. The email address would be jappel at se.local. That's my lab. I'm going to choose the appropriate policy, and I have a bunch of them, but I'll just uh, choose this guy. And now I'm going to paste the code or have the user communicate the code to me. I would type it in here, and then five minutes, it will expire. I have from five minutes up to 30 days. I'll generate a code, and I would read this back to the user. I'm going to copy that because I can, and I'm going to put it over here in the release code. And when I click Start Bypass, 
in the lower right hand corner it's going to say hey you're in bypass mode it also triggered two events back to the EPO server now I can wait for the next five minute interval which would be right now to server tasks and I can do this with any of them locate the item because I don't want to wait another five minutes I'm looking at it right now and I'm going to trigger that right now now I'm going to go back to my email look at this enter bypass DLP I'll take a peek at this the event detected was enter bypass now when I cut this video together I had put entered bypass and what happened was I messed something up so I wanted it not to be confusing on your end but I went back to the default which is fine but you can set the spelling up any way that you want the event detected was event type you see how we cut that little error that's why you have to look at your spelling really carefully if I had put in the curly braces it would have said entered bypass mode it took place on this device the name of the device this time by who was logged in and the severity is informational perfect well what I'm gonna do is for the purposes of our demonstration I'm actually going to go fix it because I can't stand little things like that so we're gonna head back into the DLP operations gonna head back in here and I'm gonna fix that little curly brace problem and we'll add that back in there so it's actually proper and we're going to say the event type was and then we'll have the event type I will save that and now what we're going to do is we're going to head on back to the client and we're going to take ourselves out of bypass click this generate code it said DLP is now active we would wait for the events to go or we're going to push them and there was one event that went up there I'm going to head back on over to EPO head back to server tasks and once and for all we're going to trigger from the rule 01 open this up the event type was DLP client leaves bypass mode the event detected was this a little redundancy it took place on this device so on and so forth but you'll now know when the particular system went out of client bypass or went into it here's a case where we can help you to set up your own bypass monitoring role that will send out an email I'm Jay in the lab. Thanks for joining me. You have a great day.